Have you ever wondered about the origins of the term the missing link? This term, often thrown around in popular science and media, refers to a transitional fossil, either hypothetical or recently discovered. It's a term that holds a novel intermediary form in the spotlight. Initially, it was coined to outline the theoretical intermediate stage in the evolutionary journey from anthropoid ancestors to anatomically modern humans, a process we refer to as hominization. The roots of this term run deep, tracing back to pre-Darwinian evolutionary theories. One of these theories is the great chain of being, a concept that presents a continuous hierarchy of all matter and life. Another one is the now outdated idea of orthogenesis, which posited that simple organisms are inherently more primitive than their complex counterparts. However, the concept of the missing link didn't exactly spring out of nowhere. Its origin can be traced back to the ideas of 18th century Enlightenment thinkers like Alexander Pope and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. These thinkers viewed humans as integral links in the great chain of being. This chain, influenced by Aristotle's theory of higher and lower animals, emerged during the medieval period in Europe and was strongly shaped by religious thought. At its peak, God reigned supreme, followed by man and then animals. As we moved into the 18th century, the previously accepted notion of the fixed nature of species and their unchanging place in the great chain started to wobble. Despite the chain's dual nature, both divided and united, it allowed for the perception of creation as a continuous whole, allowing potential overlap between the links. This vision of a progression of life forms from the simplest creatures evolving toward complexity and perfection laid the groundwork for the concept of the transmutation of species as later elucidated by Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. The concept of the missing link has its roots deeply embedded in the discourse of 18th century Enlightenment thinkers. This term, now associated with transitional fossils, particularly those considered to bridge the gap between humans and animals, has a rich and intriguing history. As we delve into the rest of this series, we'll uncover more about this fascinating term and its evolution over time. The term, the missing link, owes its inception to the Enlightenment thinkers of the 18th century. This was a time of great intellectual ferment, as minds like Alexander Pope and Jean-Jacques Rousseau grappled with our place in the universe. These thinkers saw humans not as separate from the rest of creation, but as integral links in what was known as the great chain of being. This chain, a hierarchical structure that encompassed all matter and life, had its roots in the medieval period, heavily influenced by Aristotle's theory of higher and lower animals, it was a ladder of existence with God at the top, humans just beneath and animals below us. But the Enlightenment was a time of change and questioning. The static, unchanging nature of the great chain of being was increasingly scrutinized. Despite the chain's dual nature, both separating and uniting all of creation, it allowed for a view of creation as a continuous whole. This opened the door for the possibility of overlap between the links. Visionaries like Jean-Baptiste Lamarck proposed a progression of life forms, starting from the simplest creatures and evolving towards complexity and perfection. This idea, though controversial, found acceptance among zoologists such as Henri de Blanville. The very idea of organizing organisms in a chain, even if they were assumed to be fixed, laid the groundwork for the concept of transmutation of species. This was later elucidated by Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. In this way, the Enlightenment thinkers set the stage for a paradigm shift in understanding the nature of species and their place in the world. The term missing link was yet to be coined, but the concept was already taking shape, waiting for the right moment and the right mind to give it a name and a scientific basis. And so, these thinkers, with their revolutionary ideas, paved the way for a new understanding of life on Earth. They challenged the established norms, questioned the unquestionable, and in doing so, they set the stage for the discovery of the missing link, a concept that would change our understanding of evolution forever. 
These thinkers set the stage for a paradigm shift in understanding the nature of species and their place in the world. The 18th century marked a turning point in our understanding of the nature and progression of life forms. As we moved into this era, the long-standing concept of fixed species, each occupying its immutable place in the great chain of being, began to be questioned. The once accepted notion of the unchanging nature of species was now under the microscope, and the findings were nothing short of revolutionary. Enter Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, a visionary in the field of biology. He proposed a radical shift in thinking, suggesting a progression of life forms, beginning with the simplest creatures and gradually evolving toward complexity and perfection. This was a stark departure from the static view of the great chain of being. Instead, Lamarck envisioned a dynamic evolving chain with species not fixed, but constantly in flux. This groundbreaking idea found a receptive audience in zoologists such as Henri de Blainville. They saw merit in Lamarck's proposition and embraced the concept of species evolution. The idea of a hierarchy of organisms, even if they were assumed to be fixed, was now overshadowed by the more compelling concept of species transformation. This laid the groundwork for a revolutionary theory that would later take the scientific world by storm. And so, the stage was set for Charles Darwin and his landmark theory of evolution. Darwin built on the foundational ideas of Lamarck and Blainville, proposing that species were not fixed entities, but rather evolved over time through a process known as natural selection. Darwin's theory revolutionized our understanding of the natural world, providing a new lens through which we could view the progression of life forms. In essence, the 18th century marked the transition from the idea of fixed species to evolving species. The contributions of thinkers like Lamarck and Blainville cannot be overstated. Their pioneering ideas challenged the status quo and paved the way for one of the most influential theories in the history of science. The idea of organizing organisms and the concept of species transmutation paved the way for Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. And so the journey from fixed to evolving species was well underway. The stage was set for the next chapter in our understanding of the evolution of life on Earth. The term, the missing link, made its first prominent appearance in scientific literature in the mid-19th century. Let's delve a little deeper into this fascinating development. The first time the term was explicitly used in an evolutionary context was in the 1844 publication, Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation. The author, Robert Chambers, employed it to highlight the gaps in the fossil record, gaps that he believed held the key to understanding life's complex evolutionary journey. The term was a metaphorical representation of these gaps, symbolizing the yet-to-be-discovered transitional forms that would connect different species on the evolutionary tree. However, the term missing link was not confined to Chambers' writings. Its usage soon spread finding its way into the works of other prominent scientists of the era. One such scientist was Charles Lyell, a leading geologist and a close friend of Charles Darwin. Lyell used the term missing link in the third edition of his book Elements of Geology in 1851, but with a different connotation. For Lyell, the term metaphorically described the gaps in the continuity of the geological column, gaps that were as yet unexplained by the existing geological theories. But it was in 1863 that the term missing link took on the meaning we're most familiar with today. In his book Geological Evidences of the Antiquity of Man, Lyell used the term to denote transitional forms between different taxa. This was the first instance where the term was used to refer to hypothetical or undiscovered fossils that would bridge the gap between humans and their animal ancestors. Following Lyell's interpretation, other notable scientists, including Charles Darwin, Thomas Henry Huxley and Ernst Haeckel, adopted the term in their works. They used it to discuss the transitional fossils that signified evolutionary steps from anthropoid ancestors to anatomically modern humans. The term, the missing link, has since been associated with transitional fossils, particularly those bridging the gap between humans and animals. From its origins to the present day, the term the missing link has seen an evolution in its usage and interpretation. 
This evolution mirrors that of our understanding of life itself, a journey from simplicity to complexity, from the fixed to the fluid. The term missing link was initially used in the context of the great chain of being, a philosophical and religious hierarchical structure of all matter and life. It was a concept that aimed to explain the order of the universe, from God through man to the lowest forms of life and inanimate objects. However, as our understanding of the natural world grew, so did the scope of the term. It began to be used to describe the gaps in our knowledge of the fossil record and the continuity of life on Earth. The term missing link was first used in this context by Robert Chambers in his 1844 publication, Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation. The term then gained a more specific meaning, being used to signify transitional forms between different species. This usage was popularized by Charles Lyell in his 1863 work, Geological Evidences of the Antiquity of Man. It wasn't long before notable figures in the field of biology adopted the term. Charles Darwin, Thomas Henry Huxley and Ernst Haeckel used missing link to refer to transitional fossils, especially those that appeared to bridge the gap between humans and other animals. Their works helped to solidify the term's place in the scientific lexicon and popular culture. Over time, the term missing link has been used to describe various fossils that have been thought to represent transitional stages in human evolution. However, the term has also been criticized for oversimplifying the complex process of evolution and implying that there is a direct linear path from our ancient ancestors to modern humans. Despite these criticisms, the term missing link has endured. It continues to be used in popular discussions about human evolution, serving as a shorthand for the concept of a transitional fossil. It is a testament to the enduring fascination with our past and our ongoing quest to understand our place in the grand tapestry of life. The term, the missing link, continues to be a significant part of discussions about human evolution. As we've seen, the term, the missing link, has a rich and intriguing history. It's a phrase that has sparked countless debates, fueled scientific exploration, and forever changed our understanding of human evolution. But how has this term been interpreted throughout history? From Enlightenment thinkers to modern evolutionary scientists, the concept of the missing link has been viewed from many different lenses. Stay tuned for the next part of the series where we delve into the historical interpretations of the missing link. You won't want to miss it.